Hey Worship Leader, I wanted to make a quick video referencing the worship workshop we had the other night. Had a workshop for our drummers and we invited several churches to come together and talk about drumming, all things drumming. And so I wanted to share some of the things that we talked about in that workshop. Let's get started. pretty dark but it'll work so we're gonna do a what are we doing tonight Graham doing a drum set worship workshop replacing drum heads look at this Remo nothing but the best nothing but the best <laughs> Check on the coffee situation. Dr. Donuts. Hey, Stuart. Stuart, I'm How's Jimmy. It? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Sam, our instructor, our master class instructor. So yeah, we had a workshop for drummers. And the reason I wanted to do this one at this point is because our drum heads at our church needed to be replaced like badly. It was a very practical session led by our instructor. His name is Sam Brunswick. Sam's a great guy. Um, he's in a band called Mediocre at Best. He is a drummer for our church and he's just really talented. So I invited him to speak um, to these other drummers. Very knowledgeable. The reason I wanted to do a workshop with the drummers is because as a worship leader, I've realized that a lot rides on how good the drummer is or how closely the drummer pays attention to the dynamics of the song. I've been in situations where drummers have had like two rhythms that they do. They have like their fast rhythm and their slow rhythm. The foundation of the song to start with was just off. And I've had a bass workshop where I talk about the bass instrument is like the foundation melodically of a song. But the same is true for drums. Drums is like the foundation of the dynamics of the song. And that is one of the reasons that I feel very strongly about talking to drummers on how to properly drum in a worship setting. And one of the things we talked about was how it may be different to be a drummer in a worship setting versus being a drummer in a different kind of band, a rock band or a marching band or whatever kind of band you're in. There's a lot of different scenarios where the different techniques of how a drummer plays his instrument serves that situation best. And for congregational worship, there's a a certain way a drummer can serve the church well. The second thing we talked about was how to prepare for the weekend. And thinking through each song, it is good to think through the song in parts. You have usually an intro, a verse, maybe a pre-chorus, a chorus, a bridge. Somewhere in there, there might be an instrumental or an interlude, and then you have the outro. If you think about parts rather than just a whole, then when the worship leader inevitably changes things, like I'm very guilty of, you're really just rearranging the parts that you've already practiced. And what this does is it helps in a couple ways. It helps dynamically because as you think through parts, you can naturally build through the song. And so if you have three or four choruses throughout the sequence of the song, it is important not to make all those choruses necessarily sound the same. You wanna take the song on a journey. The third thing to think through when thinking about how to prepare a song for the weekend is do what you can to serve the song. A lot of times we are covering more popular Christian songs that may have multiple drummers on the track or they may be using loops that we might not be using. And so thinking through what you can do to serve the song is a good way to lead the band and also lead the church in worship. So after we talked about how to prepare for the weekend and prepare the songs and internalize them, we talked about how to play in different situations, different settings. In our context, we have a drum cage and the drums are mic'd up. So the drummers are free to play as loud and dynamic as they want. But a lot of my friends and other worship leaders don't have a drum cage. They may not even have a full drum kit, but some of them have a drum kit, but they have to be creative in how they build dynamically at lower volumes. Choosing the appropriate stick type can be a way to build dynamically without having too much volume. Using hot rods instead of traditional sticks is one way that you could do that. If you're in a smaller venue, it may be that playing a full drum kit is just not gonna work. You may just need to use a cajon. The important thing is that you serve the song, that you serve the congregation and play what is appropriate and ultimately play what the worship leader needs you to play. So after we talked about how to prepare for the weekend, 
and how to play in different situations, in different contexts. We talked about fills, appropriate fills. Using appropriate fills greatly affects the dynamics of the song. I've been around drummers who were great at keeping time, great to playing with a click, and even played their parts right until it got to the fills, and their fills were just awkward. Or they did fills in the wrong place. They do a, a, a crazy fill in the middle of a chorus or in the middle of a verse that made the congregation and even me think that we were trying to go somewhere else when we weren't ready. Which brings up the next thing that I really wanted to talk about, which are lead-ins. Sometimes the worship leader is thinking about what the keyboard player is doing or what the electric guitar or the bass is doing or maybe their own instrument or thinking about how to lead the congregation and what they're gonna say next. And what helps bring confidence to a worship leader is when a drummer helps lead the band by doing appropriate lead-in fills to let everyone know that we're about to go to the next section. This not only helps the worship leader and the volunteers, but it also helps the congregation because the congregation doesn't have the cues or the click in their ears. They're just listening to the band. And so it's important for a drummer who might be used to playing in a band where it doesn't matter if the audience knows where the song is going and maybe it's not even appropriate to do that. In a worship context, it's very important for the drummer to help lead the congregation to know where the song is going. Because most people, let's face it, are in the congregation, they're staring at the screen because they, or on their sheet of paper because they don't really know the words and they're just waiting on the band to lead them well. And have you ever been in a church where this is not done well and you're sitting there singing and you just start looking because you're wondering, where's the band taking us? Are they taking us anywhere? Do I know when to sing? And so for drummers, this is very important to help lead the congregation to have appropriate fills and to do great lead-ins to lead the congregation to know where they're going. So after we talked about how to prepare, how to play dynamically in different situations, how to make sure that we have appropriate fills and lead-in fills, we discussed how to take the song on a journey, how to build dynamically. And what I mean by this is usually you have a chorus that you sing multiple times throughout the song. In order to take the song on a journey, none of those choruses need to be played exactly the same. A lot of times the first chorus will be a down chorus where the drums are just out. But even when we play multiple choruses where the band is all in, it is helpful for the drummer to take the song on a journey. One of the last things we talked about is as a drummer, you're responsible for the time. And in our context, we use a click, but that does not mean that the drummer is not also responsible for keeping everyone on time. A lot of times vocalists still struggle, even with a click in their ear, to stay on tempo. It is helpful for the drummer to use the left foot or to keep time on the hi-hat to let the singers know what the tempo is. And this also helps with the congregation. The congregation doesn't have the click in their ears. Remember that. So even though it might not be on the recording, for the drummer to help keep the tempo helps not only the singers who tend to get off sometimes, but also helps the congregation know what the tempo is of the song, especially when there's no groove. <laughs> Overall, the drum workshop was a success. Even if these are principles we already know as musicians, it's always helpful to be around other musicians and to be reminded of some of the basics. So what about you? Do you have any tips or tricks that we didn't think about or didn't cover in this particular workshop? Let us know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. So that's it. That's really all we covered in this drum workshop. If you'd like to see more contents like this, let me know down in the comments. We're going to be doing more and more workshops whether it be drums or even other instruments. So let me know which ones you would like to see. If this is the first video you've seen, subscribe to the channel. I've uploaded some other videos. Check those out. You can follow us on social media at Hey Worship Leader on Facebook and Instagram. If you like this video, give it a like. Hit the subscribe button. Also hit the bell so you can receive the latest content that we put out. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Peace out. I think I'm done. <laughs> this is a floor tom. It's on the What's up, resident? What's up, former resident? Ooh. So we just wrapped up our worship leader workshop drum edition. And now we got to put the drums back together. Sam. We're putting the drums back together. We are. And by we. Yeah. That means Sam. Me. <laughs> Sam, we are. We, we put, me. We got to put the mic. Just like I said, I was going to help take all the heads off. I also. <laughs> Didn't do that. This uh, this is Evan. He used to be hey, my he used to be my intern. I wasn't all intern. these lights.